This video is brought to you by Squarespace. My name's Chanel. It's been a while. I recently moved apartments and now I have a full room to myself for my bookbinding studio. So I've been tinkering with the setup in the past few days and I'm excited to show you what it looks like right now. My main priority for the space is that it's functional. So that means everything is organized and easy to access and I also wanted the space to work well for filming. So let's start off with the layout of the studio. I have my desk in the middle so that I can walk all around and film from different angles. And I am standing when I'm working most of the time anyway, so um, I like that there is a uh, space to move around. This is an electric standing desk from FlexiSpot. Um, also, Lucy, my dog, doesn't have a place in here yet, but I'm hoping she will join me under the desk when I am working. It seems like a lot of people that I like and admire have pegboards, so I thought it was time to get one for myself. I'm glad that I was able to mount it on top of my cabinet my lease is very strict, so I want to prevent drilling into the wall as much as possible. So I just have a pretty basic setup right now. Um, I have my cutting and measuring tools, my bone folders, some pens and pencils, and then I picked up this cute little tapestry from Seoul, South Korea last year. I love that all of these things are in view, and I'm sure the board will fill up as I start working in the space. On top of the cabinet, I have other tools and materials that I most often reach for. And then I left this toolbox here for everything else. Um, so I have blades, um, my hole puncher, glue brushes, um, utility knives, glue stick, tape, pliers. I would consider this um, kind of like my junk drawer. So in this cabinet, I'm only storing paper. I've got um, some Tomoe River paper that I bought for the first time, so I'm excited to try binding with them. Um, some scrap boards, art paper, um, some text blocks, uh, 11 by 17 paper down here, and then some letter size paper right here. In my old place, I was storing a whole bunch of different things, but I decided that um, this would be my paper cabinet just to protect the paper as much as I can. And um, this place has double paned window windows, which is um, perfect for controlling humidity and temperature. Um, so I am relieved about that. I have this basket here so that I can put in any incoming mail and uh, drop off receipts that I need to process. In these drawers I have my business supplies and stationery, miscellaneous bookbinding materials including a book cloth swatch book, my clamps are in here as well, tape, glue, glue gun, string, spray bottle, art supplies like paints, stamps, cord and my Instax printer, cables, hard drives, and other equipment for filming. Thank you to Squarespace for supporting my content. I've been using Squarespace since I started Bitter Melon Bindery and I haven't considered switching since. The biggest thing that I was hoping for and they actually implemented was their drag and drop technology called Fluid Engine. So that just makes it way easier for me to um, place things uh, exactly the way I want it. I've always been better at craft than with 
2D art and graphic design and so I just don't have the time to figure things out and Squarespace makes it really easy for me to just pop in my brand colors and the photos and videos I've taken and then my website um, can best reflect my brand and who I am as an artist. If you're looking for a simple website builder for your art business, you can go to my link, squarespace.com slash bittermelon for a free trial and then you'll get 10% off your first purchase. This is my favorite corner of the room. Um, in my previous place, I had zero shelving for displaying my completed books. And I made sure to get one this time. I filled up one so quickly that I got a second one. And I realized that I need um, some empty space to expand um, and also store inventory for future journal collections that I will release in my shop. I like the depth of these shelves so that I can play around with the display and um, layer my books. I'm also hoping to get a couple more plants for these shelves. I was happy to find this bin at Ikea because it's tall enough and narrow so that I can store my rolls of paper and book cloth. I scored this workbench on Facebook Marketplace. I called the guy and he just said, there's 50 other people who want it. Just cross your fingers that it's still available on Sunday. Hearing that uh, just made me feel much more competitive. And so I offered a deposit and he was still iffy. I sent him a text right after and I said, hey, I'm definitely gonna pick it up uh, on Sunday if it's still available. It's going to be for my art studio. And then um, a couple hours later, I get a text back saying, that he himself is an artist, he does mosaics and metal art, and he feels good about um, giving this to a fellow artist. And when I got that text, I was like, yes, uh, it felt like such a win. This thing is on casters and it has these lovely drawers. So I don't have much in there right now. Um, these are miscellaneous, um, tools. This is for my hot stamping machine that I haven't tried yet. Um, so I'll definitely use it in a video soon. I have um, my fountain pen inks in here and then some um, punching guides and clips in here. This workbench is going to be perfect for finishing and obviously my guillotine is here so I'll be um, chopping here. And um, I have my laser printer stored right under on the shelf um, and I have a recycling bin as well. So it'll be nice to have a second surface to work on and to press books on. You've all seen this shelf. I love it because it can hold a lot of stuff and it's super sturdy. I originally got it for storing paper, but since I have paper in my cabinet, um, I'm struggling to really figure out the purpose and um, you know set up for the shelf. But right now I have um, miscellaneous things, random things here. Uh, this is um, my scrap book cloth and papers. I'm probably gonna get a second one of these. My corner rounder, scale, book press. Um, I got this plate organizer for my moisture barriers and um, waste sheets. Uh, I think it's really useful to organize them this way. And then um, my rulers my um, glues, some weights, my glue bowl. I have um, some extra end bands and mull in here. In here I have some cardstock, lucta sheets, 
um, heat and bond and stickers. Down here I have some things that I don't quite know what to do with. And then I have my book board and watercolor sheets. I don't yet have a flat file or a storage system for them, so they're just gonna live down here for now. I still have this corner to make use of. And I also have this space to work with. I actually have a big box of paper down here. Um, and so let me know what you think would be the best way to store large sheets of paper. Um, I've been considering a large A-frame where there's rods and I can lay the papers over the rods, uh, just like in a paper store. I've been keeping an eye out for flat files in the area, but they're either too expensive or too old and crappy. Um, and at this point, I'm not sure if I even have space for a flat file anymore. We'll see, we'll see what, um, what I end up doing and I'll definitely keep you posted. I hope you enjoyed the studio tour. Let me know if you have any questions around where I got things or my thought process behind the setup. There's so much I want to try and learn this year, and I feel like I have renewed energy to put out consistent videos this year. And my priority is to share videos that are helpful and interesting to you. So let me know what you'd like to see in the comments. See you next time.